That's right. I'll call the Waterworks and Lighting Commission meeting for May 13, 2015 to order. Approval, additions, or corrections to the minutes of the Finance Committee meeting held April 8th. I'll move that we approve. I'll second. Motion been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Right. Opposed? Motion carries. Approval, additions, or corrections to the minutes for the regular commission meeting held April 8th. I move that we approve. I second that. Motion been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Approval, additions or corrections to the minutes for the special commission meeting held May 5th. So moved. I'll second. Okay, motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The first action item is the 2014 audit report. Very good. Good afternoon. Again, my name is John Troutman. For anyone new, uh, shareholder of the Shank, your, your outside external audit firm. And today I just want to go through really the results and the conclusion of the 2014 audit. Uh, in doing that, I'll be spending most of the time in the management communication document, which you should have as the staple document, um, usually in the inside cover of the uh, annual financial report. And really, to, to start out with, I just want to carry forward the, the results of the audit, and that is uh, essentially an unmodified opinion. Uh, again, again this year, that's essentially a clean opinion. I want to say, meaning they didn't make any modifications to it in issuing our opinion on your financial statements. So great job there. That's what all external audits strive for. Does everybody have uh, the management communication letter? Good. Uh, page one really starts with that communication letter, and it's just that. It's, it's our conclusion of the audit, and in concluding, we have to tell you about some stuff. And, and really, the, the main first page is really the same every year. And the takeaways there are simply our responsibilities are listed, our, the standards we follow are listed, and also the planning, the timing, the scope of the audit, our considerations of internal control while we're issuing that opinion is on the bottom of page one, top of page two. And there's a lot of discussion there. A lot of that does not change, so I will not read through each and every word, but I highly encourage you to look at that each year. Uh, middle of, or the first third of uh, page two there, qualitative aspects of accounting practices, really just brings in a discussion of some various things we want to point out uh, in your financial statements. There's really three key estimates that we want to uh, just kind of highlight that are in your financial statements. One is the estimate of other post-employment benefits, and that is entirely based on an actual report. In other words, an estimate and based on some assumptions and so forth. What that does is it essentially estimates your post employment benefits. Um, management's estimate of depreciable life and capital assets obviously, uh, your, your plant and both the water and electric utilities are, are significant. Because of that, of course, they're depreciated over time, and that time is, is an estimate. Uh, you don't know for sure how long one of those assets are going to last. However, there's specific guidelines you follow, and you're in compliance with that and certainly uh, uh, normal. We point it out simply because it is an estimate. And the third, uh, you have an uh, estimate for allowance uh, of an uncollectible account. Anytime you have a receivable, customer receivable situation, of course, there's always going to be some uncollectible uh, portion of that. And you have to estimate that. So you look that allowance on financial statements. For us to page two and into page three, concluding in page three, <clears throat> it's really kind of a, a laundry list or a bullet point list of really every aspect of your audit as far as any kind of difficulties we would encounter or any kind of issues we want to point out specifically. And it's nice and short, so you don't have to read through all 80-some pages of the annual financial report to try to get it. So I highly encourage you to really look at that as kind of a snapshot. Happy to report we record encountered no difficulties, and we certainly appreciate the effort uh, that Jeff and the entire management really does uh, provide us in doing this audit. We certainly appreciate that. Page four <clears throat> begins some of the financial information we bring in. But again, we bring in this information simply uh, repeat from the annual financial report. It's just a little bit easier to go through in, in a few pages versus paging through the entire annual financial report. Operating results for the electric utilities on page four. 
Residential, uh, 10,171,000 as compared to 10310 your most significant revenue, obviously. The rest of your charges for services are listed there, um, and then uh, your uh, power cost adjustment of, of uh, a negative 276,000. So total sales of electricity for 2014, 25,778,000. Down slightly from 26,235 a year ago. You have other operating revenues of a little over 370,000, bringing your total operation or total operating revenues 26,150,000 for 2014. Compare that with expenditures, operating expenditures of 25,510. By far, the majority of the primary revenue or primary expenditure rather of that is 19,864,000 for your for your operation and maintenance. Uh, other power supply, obviously. Uh, the rest of those are listed there. So you have operating income for 2014 of 640000 Now the bottom there, you kind of see the, the breakdown of the electric utility charges for services. Threw, threw some graphs in there, a little bit easier to read, a little bit easier for users to understand some of this. Uh, certainly uh, uh, nothing surprising there. Goes along with the table above. Page five, continues that discussion for the water utility. You have charges for services, uh, operating revenues, I'm sorry, total sales of water, 4,680,000 as compared to 4,668,000 a year ago. Other, a small other operating revenue, 257,000. So total operating revenues for the water utility uh, is just short of $5 million, 4,937,000. Compare that with operating expenses, Total for the water, 3,744,000, up slightly from 3,190,000 a year ago. And I'll get to why that is, of course, uh, as you all know, it was a tough winter, a lot of freeze ups and so forth. So you'll see that in the rate of return on the next page. Um, but that is definitely what we've been seeing. Uh, majority of utilities are faced with that same issue. Total operating income for the water, 1,192,000. And then again, you have that breakdown of all your <clears throat> Your customer revenues are broken out for water as well. Page six starts talking about that rate of return. You have both uh, electric and water on the table with a comparison. So your authorized rate of return will kind of start on the bottom and work your way up. Uh, for the electric utility, you can see in 2013 it was 7%. Uh, at the end of 2014, you did a full electric rate case and adjusted that to 5.75, uh, which is very typical. The line above that is your actual rate of return. So you were, were operating at about a 1% rate of return in 2013, a year ago. This audit year, it dropped to a negative 0.14. That's exactly why you had to adjust the rate, because you're, you're operating at a negative rate of return. If you go over to the right column, two columns of, of that table, you have the water. Again, that did not change. It's 6% authorized rate of return. That's what your rates were set at. Uh, uh, back in, in, at uh, some point in time when you set your rates, and you were operating in 2013 at a 4.87% rate of return, so just slightly below that. Um, and then it dropped to 2.37. And of course, the, the bottom section there explains why uh, that is, and, and you, the experienced uh, increase in freeze ups and so forth had a lot to do with that. We expect that to then come back up to a 2013 level. If it does, in fact, do that in 15, then you know that's why. If it continues to drop, then certainly got to look at that and uh, over time and, and see how that's going. Any questions on any of that? Page seven just kind of continues with that rate of return in a graph form, uh, and then comparing not only the last two years, but five years. So you can kind of see the, the two lines there, both electric and water. Um, Water being a little bit more stable. Again, we dropped a little bit, but, but uh, the trend is, is fairly stable, uh, but a slightly downward trend, whereas electric, you can clearly see the, the downward trend. And that's really what you're looking for. If you get you know, five, 10 years out and you see up to peaks and valleys, but if you, if you get the trend going down, that's what you need to be concerned with and start watching that closer. Hey, Jake. This kind of brings in some comments and observations. This is kind of the area where we can alert you of some new standards coming out, that's exactly what this is. Uh, again, the Government Accounting Standards Board Statement number 67 and 68 is redoing the financial reporting for pensions and basically changing the rules slightly. 
Uh, they were changed uh, about a decade ago uh, with, with, uh, in terms of the Wisconsin retirement system, which is why when you read your, your footnote and also the city's footnote, you'll see a huge one or two pages devoted to Wisconsin retirement and your participation in that. That's really what this standard is getting at. And, and they're, they're, they're changing it simply to address the fact that there are some states out there uh, that have these retirement plans that are not funded. And, you know, when what we're seeing, we still have to wait for the state to get their actual report in, and we're going to we'll get a copy of that, and, and all participants in Wisconsin retirement will get a copy of that, and then we'll have to address how we're going to uh, disclose that. But in all indications, at least initially here, are Wisconsin's doing a pretty good job of funding their Wisconsin retirement system. So we don't expect any huge, drastic things to happen. What this standard does, just for your information, is require you to essentially put a, a liability on your books, much like the old have that we just talked about. The other post-employment benefit was based on your actuarial report. Well, this is going to be the state's actuarial report, and they deem that a state in particular is underfunded. You have to book these participants. You have to book that liability in your, in your financial statement. So we'll wait to see where that shakes out. That will be issued in July. The end of July is what they're saying right now. Whether or not that is met, I don't know. Uh, but that is for 14. So you can kind of do the math here and say, well, we're not getting that report until July, maybe August of, for the 14 year. Well, it's going to be difficult to audit that. So far. I mean, we're going to have to wait on a lot of different audits to get that number. What we'll probably end up doing, which is unknown yet, is relying on the last year's. So the one you get this coming summer will be the one we use for, for next year's audit. So again, the reason why this happened, there are states out there that are severely underfunded and have millions in, in dollars of in these Wisconsin and these retirement funds, and yet the money on hand isn't even there to, to cover the participants. So they're trying to address that because that liability is real to the participants. So I don't expect it to be a major thing. The rest of the document is really your representation letter. So and that's the letter. Just to be clear, yes. no material effect on our we don't expect that. We don't know that until we get that actual report. It all depends on the assumptions. We don't anticipate from what we're seeing that Wisconsin is underfunded significantly. Will there be a, a, a liability? Perhaps, potentially. But we're talking, you know, there's some states out there that could only be 15% funded. So that could be in the millions, just like the other post-employment benefit liability was in the millions as well. Uh, yep. Billions. Correct. Right. Okay. The rest of this document is just your management representation letter that simply concludes the audit and put that in here for your reference. Any questions? Anything else as far as the uh, annual financial report, audit in general? Any questions in general? And happy to take um, Management estimate of depreciable life. Yes. Any comments on that? Um, no, other than to say that, uh, like I said, um, your estimates are within specific parameters that are allowable. And Public Service Commission has a lot to do with that. And so you're not outside of that. So no, no comments other than the fact that you're well within the norm. The actual public, public service actually dictates to us what, what those categories are going to be appreciated at. So exactly. we do a rate case. Yep. Then on page three, you make the comment, in addition, during our audit, you noted certain other matters that are presented for your consideration. That is what? Essentially what I just talked about, GASB 67 and 68. Okay. So nothing beyond that? Nothing beyond that, correct. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I'd like to compliment Jeff and his staff for putting the other uh, good uh, financials together into the audit. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We need to accept the audit. We'll, we'll need a motion to accept the 2014 audit report. I would move that we approve the 2014 audit report as presented. Okay. I'll second that. We have a motion and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Okay. 
Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Fourth of the July fireworks donation request. This is something that we've done in the past several years to help the community, and we think it's a good event downtown to bring everybody downtown. Um, we actually have someone from Encourage here that may want to speak. Um, but I guess I would recommend that we approve the request. Um, we've, in the past, have given $500 um, for the fireworks. Um, so so that's my two cents. Thank you. Okay. Second. Okay. We have a motion from John and second by Mike. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And if I could sure. say something, I'm Carol Davis from Encourage, and I am the advisor of the Teen Fireworks Committee. And because uh, it's during the school day, unfortunately, none of the Teen Fireworks Committee members could be here. But I just want to express our appreciation for Waterworks and Lighting Commission's ongoing support. You've been a staunch supporter of the fireworks. And we thank you again for your support this year. Currently, we're at $11,000 of the $18,000 goal that is set for this year. So your support is much appreciated and needed. So thank you very much. OK, thank you, Carol. Yes, Mike. I can add to that. I think our fireworks um, show is just amazing for a town of this size. And I, I think all the community appreciates any donation. So. I agree with what uh, Carol has said. It's just, uh, I think it's, a, I don't know if you guys have ever seen that, but it's just amazing. That's a great turnout for our community, so. Okay, thank you, Mike. And, and hats off to the kids. The kids. <laughs> they keep it going. Next year. Yeah. Okay, thank you. The next item is training request uh, that Jeff has in here. Um, Jeff can answer any of your questions. Yeah, this is just an annual training that um, APPA puts on, um, much like the annual conference that's going on in Minneapolis this um, summer. This one's geared specifically to business and finance. Um, I think Joel went two years ago. I think it's a it's a worthwhile effort, not only for the topics that are covered, as you can see on there, but just for the, the networking and uh, other opportunities to, to meet and talk to people down there. So move. Okay. Second. Motion by John, seconded by Joel. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. A discussion to change the date for the June commission meeting. Uh, yes, we, um, as a result of both the APPA and the AWW, a conference being the week of our commission meeting we're going to have trouble getting a quorum and Todd and myself will also be on the road so the thought is not only to mention that but then the following week is the MEW annual meeting in Rapids where we you know celebrate a hundred year anniversary and thankfully I get to pass off the MEW gavel um, so the thought was we would just at this point in time cancel the meeting and then if we needed to get together for whatever reason we would either do it towards the end of may or 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 the week prior to the to meeting in early june which will likely have items that we need to cover but this one we'll have to to cancel just because of participation i'll make a motion to cancel the june meeting okay i'll second one we have a motion and seconded to cancel our June meeting. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. So the next meeting will be the second week of July then? Well, like we don't know when it's going to be used. That'll be the next scheduled one, but you'll right. see the notices if we have one prior to that one. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. No. That's Bless you. Bless you. Excuse me. It's allergy season. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Safety Committee uh, meeting minutes. I would like to uh, compliment the leadership and uh, employees on their gold award, which was identified in some of the uh, communication that was preceding our agenda, and that's fantastic. Uh, so congratulations. Thank you. 
on behalf of the employees down right. when you go a year without without lost time in So very good. Sean or, or Dale, um, I know Sean had suggested adding a new item to the monthly safety report to discuss any incidents. Is is that going to uh, proceed? Or is yeah, yeah, we're going to start doing that. It's it's a good way. Um, it's not focusing on the person, the actual person that's in it. It's actually just focusing on, focusing on the incident. Um, I think it's key to, to the incident reporting system and incident investigation is prevention. And the only way we can really talk about prevention in regards to safety is to actually discuss the incidents that are happening so we can see if there's a way to stop them from happening again. So good. I feel it's going to be a good addition to the safety committee. We have good representation from the different areas in, in the facility. So we can start talking about that and getting people aware of what's going on and just some watch outs. Okay, good. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? The line superintendent report. When are we going to see a report with no squirrels? <laughs> <laughs>
Um, you never really know for sure, but uh, several of them are, I'd say probably a third of those have been abandoned. A third of the 71 have been mm -hmm. abandoned. So there, there, there's no water to the house either. Well, what happens, we'll go back and shut water off. <clears throat> so these are electrical disconnections? These are all electric disconnections. Okay, here. thank you. <clears throat> By the way, the cold weather the last couple of days got it, has that number down a bit. Oh, good. <laughs> <So. laughs> It's, it's still very high. Yeah, I was I, I was amazed. <laughs> Your uh, rears appear to have plateaued. Yeah, I mean they're, they're very similar to last year at this time. Um, the only uh, the only thing that uh, is an outlier there is a commercial delinquency that we talked about last month, which is skewing the ninety day number. We have followed up on with the attorneys. They're aware of that. We talked about the meeting. So we'll see what happens. Any other questions or comments for Joel? Director of Finance Report. The insurance conference. Mm -hmm. uh, so it sounds like the Wisconsin Municipal Insurance Company, their their costs are going to go up forty to sixty percent. That's what they're estimating at this point. Um, they kind of showed some figures where they had about a forty million dollar surplus in two thousand eleven, and now have a deficit of around five or six million dollars. So. Um, to recoup a lot of those costs they're looking at. Since it's getting near to the end of this program, they're gonna definitely be increasing their rates to kind of make that zero by the time they get done in two years. Um, well, I, I always thought that, uh, is it the Wisconsin Munis Municipal Insurance Company that we use for here? We use it here. I mean, that's the, the local government <coughs> property insurance fund, right? If you that's recall, the governor eliminated that in his proposed budget for this year, which kind of got a lot of the communities up in arms. And then through a hearing, they decided to extend the date to which people could be on it. But at the same time, they're saying, now we're going to jack the rates up 40 to 60 percent. So. Jeff is working with the league and other potential insurers to switch our insurance, you know, prior to or right after that increase happens. So we're we're looking at changing our carrier. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, okay, I'm, I take it I'm missing something, but why did we go from a surplus to a deficit? I mean, this is for the entire pool, and what they claimed a lot of the issues were a lot of um, counties in the southeast part of the state. Um, started using the insurance fund as a maintenance fund, so would put in a deductible for something and then repair buildings that should have been being repaired all along. Oh. Um, but then claiming losses that way. So there's kind of a loophole in the system between um, the school districts and Milwaukee County. So that was illegal to do, it's, it's a loophole. It's Apparently that was the issue that, yeah, that they found to get extra money out of the pool. They said a lot of these, like Milwaukee County's um, ratio was about, they were taking out about two and a half times of what they were putting in the fund. So a county that size drained the pool pretty quick. I see. Uh, if everything was to go forward, what, what does that 40 or 50 percent mean to us? To us? Premiums? Um, it would be about a $10,000 increase in insurance funds. Our local government premiums are around $20,000 a year. Okay, thank you. So in, with this new company that um, the league is trying to put together, we're looking at maybe about an 8 to 10% increase. And the reason they're going to be able to keep that down is because they're just going to focus on um, their current customer, their current base, which doesn't include schools and doesn't include like the counties. So it's just going to be towns and villages, which have a lot lower loss ratio. And will it still be a public entity, though? It will be. I mean, that's going to be their, their focus, but it's still going to be a, a commercial um, company that can write policies. Is there a, a 
an organization, a private company that we could use? We could use any insurance company we wanted to. I mean, I think the, the pool has just been a lower cost. A lot of insurance companies um, in the past didn't want to write for um, municipalities and stuff because they didn't know how to how to insure it. It didn't fit in the box that they're used to insuring. So that's why a lot of them stayed away from it. That's why this, the government um, insurance fund kind of took off the way it did. So see, I just thought the Wisconsin Mutual Insurance Company that we use that that I, I didn't realize that we were using this other company. I thought it was it covers all of these things. It doesn't. I mean, the, the is the, that like just our our um, the local our government problems here? Is that what the local government pool is more for the buildings, and then we use the league for um, liability and auto. Okay, and that, that's what the coverage was. Wisconsin Mutual handle right. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions or comments for Jeff? Information systems report. Uh, we are currently working on with NISC request features to their app suite software and get them on the application programming schedule. So I've been testing it the app suite uh, piece of software that they have, which loads on an iPad. That's what we were tentatively going to use for the crews out in the field to okay. look at the maps and get the work order information. Well, it's, it's, not, it's not made for our type of utility. We're electric and water. We do things a little bit differently than the co-ops do. And this is more, it's got to be geared towards the co-ops. So I've requested about eight different features to be added to the App Suite software. And I've been working with NISC to get it on their programming schedule so that we can get those updates put into the software. I see. And then here, the next paragraph, uh, you receive the application for viewing and editing a PDF document. And this is what you're talking about uh, using this for the commission packets? Yes. That is actually, there was a handout on each one of your um, sections there. That one right there, yes. Okay. Uh, that is just kind of the user's guide for the piece of software um, that we're going to use to view PDFs. It'll allow you to do handwriting on PDFs, to type on them, to highlight areas, to add notes. So, so that we can we'll be able to write right on our. Correct. So what I'll do is, I gave you the handouts, I'd like you to read over them. You know, it may not all make sense, but once I show you, at least you'll have seen it already, so it'll, it'll make more sense as, as we uh, demo the, the product. And then I'm gonna collect your iPads after the meeting today. I'm gonna get the software loaded on there, and then we'll have a special meeting for a training session for the software. And we'll use it for the next meeting that we have, whatever the next commission meeting is. That'll be nice. I've been playing with the software, it's really nice. It really works well. You're going to have to use your spatulas, though. <laughs> How long do you think they can then, we don't want to have their iPads out of use for until we meet again, so how long do you think it'll take you to load them and then they can pick them up or whatever? I should have them ready next week. Okay. <clears throat> Some of you probably won't care. But <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, we might miss some of the junk mail. I didn't realize that Waterworks and Lighting Commission could get junk mail. <laughs> they Everybody, find you eventually. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> Any other questions or comments for uh, Matt? Conservation Manager Report. class on energy. Um, is this an appropriate time to 
discuss that? Did everyone see it? Yeah, I mean, I think, well, depending on the rest of the commissioners feel, I mean, I think it's a worthwhile thing. Um, so all we'll need to do is to um, basically uh, put it on the agenda and then make a decision whether we fund one or two or whatever, whatever we fund for them to attend. Um, so is this time so the next meeting, we'll make sure we agenda it. Is it time critical? Well, I think the training's in August, right? Yeah, or, August 3rd. Yeah. So if we do it in July, early July, it should be plenty of time. And we may meet before then as well on our issues. So, and then we'll just agenda that, too. And I have contact information, too, with the key program from the university, so I can reach out to them. Okay. And we kind of have roughly, Jim and I have discussed it. Um, we have some numbers in mind as far as how much it would cost to uh, fund one of the students, one of the teachers to, to go to one of the seminars or conferences. I would encourage it because the more awareness that we have of STEM curriculum and the more you know, a lot of the issue is the teachers are not all that familiar with science, technology, and engineering, and uh, the more familiarity we can create, the, the better off I think we'll be. Yeah, yeah. we'll definitely put it on the agenda, and the commission can decide what they, what they want to do. that part of that key program that was in your report? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. and that's what we were discussing. Any other questions or comments? For Seeing none, then Director of Engineering and Electric Operations Report. <clears throat> department attended as well and we got some makeup sessions that we want to have on off time hours for the um, night shifts of both the Wisconsin Rapids and police and fire department and the Grand Rapids fire department so we're going to do some more training but the training was very well received it, it dealt with electrical safety if you come upon a scene where you have a primary power cable um, that's come down and it's laying on the road what type of uh, actions you should take to make sure that you, you're safe in responding to anybody that might be injured. And so, yeah, we had a lot of real positive response. Is this the first time this was conducted? I believe so. Okay. Yeah. Good for you. Have you heard of any other municipalities that might want some training? Well, actually, the, the training started with uh, MEUW having it for our line crew okay. and then uh, from there we decided that we should take it and, and train other employees of the city with it. Okay, thank so. you. Any questions or comments for Todd? He takes good pictures. <laughs> well, I want to thank the Todd and Moses and the crews for every any time we take one of our subs out of out of commission for a day or so. It all, we're serving one side of the city from the other from all power constraints, and I'd just like to thank them. I think they did a great job not only on the work we had to do, which was to replace the 115 kV switch, but what from I understand our crews. Uh, you know, took the bull by the horns and was operating all of our gang-related switches and rewiling them and while the subs were down, making sure everything was good to go for the future, so, and everything. The cable held up underneath the bridge, so everything went well, so. 
Thanks. Very good. Thank you. I keep hearing about that cable on the bridge. Is that? <laughs> Has somebody got to focus on somebody or are we going to fix that <laughs> or well, update that? We use it so little that, and the cost to replace it is so high that it's hard to justify. It's probably not going to happen. Though. Yeah, and I think what would happen before we would do that is if we were to have failures on parts of it, we would cut out the cables because there's multiple cables. There's like eight cables. We just cut out the ones that are bad until we finally got to a point where we'd have to replace it. So what is the voltage? At uh, 46,000. Yep. Have you tested it? Does it heat or is there anything that it really is at risk? Nothing's really at risk, it's just the age. It's um, put in when the bridge was installed, which is probably about the early 1980s, I would guess. We high pot it and test it every time before we yeah. energize it anyway, just to make sure because we don't use it that often. Yeah, right. so you do do the yeah but before, but, but still, once yeah. you put the load on it, anything can happen. So I, far, so good. <laughs> the high spot tests are sure all right. I mean, they, they do tell you quite a bit on They do. It's yeah. one of the Every, tests that I thought Everything is looking really good. good at the moment. It's just that at some point, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, it's good that you're doing the testing. I guess I wasn't aware of that, that high spot in the Yeah. Is that the one that blew the uh, manhole cover off? No, I, actually, there's also 15 KV cables that go under the bridge as well. Okay. And that was one of those cables actually had failed. Right. You got a good memory. <laughs> 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 Please for the uh, percent ownership, we're pretty much abandoned. No, I mean the, the executive assistants, which were basically the person right under each commissioner, you know, understood our concerns and even felt something on a personal level that that something ought to be addressed. But when you've got three Walker appointees in there and Walker wanting this merger to happen, there was no doubt what the vote was going to be anyway. Um, that's kind of what we were told, and then the following week they got together and less than, according to Richard, our, our attorney for glue, attended the hearing, in less than 45 minutes they approved the merger without any conditions. So we'll just have to keep an eye on what goes on with AT and ATC, and then also try to protect our, our wholesale interests as we go forward for the two big issues. Just to wait and see. Yeah, well, we actually have a meeting set up with WPS, I think, in a couple of weeks, and, and actually one next week with WEC to talk about wholesale agreements. We want a few things, some flexibility within the deals, and we'll see how that goes. Did I also read there's some issue of their profitability? Um, Inappropriately high or something? Whose? The distribution system? Wax, which would be We Energies. I was trying to, uh, I have to go back here. I was well, there was a big art. I know they all had rate cases this year. Yeah. And the big thrust of those rate cases was to, you know, double or triple their service charges, uh, which is the cost of service. We raised ours a couple bucks through this rate case. They raised theirs up to 20 to $30 per utility, and that was to protect against potential distributed generation and recoup the, the actual cost of service. I mean, it costs a lot more in capacity to, than actually what we're charging. What are we charging now? Nine bucks, I think, for the service charge? Yeah, I mean, it, ours should be a lot higher than that as well, but most of our, so they adjusted, they raised the fixed charges really high and then adjusted their energy charges down, but, but I hadn't seen where somebody was over earning but I could have missed it. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been gotten rate cases this year. They all three of them were approved. Okay. What would be the worst case scenario with us and the ATC? Well, you know, I think even through this, Glue is going to try to work with with the co-ops and try to get a board seat. At least then we can oversee it more. 
Uh, once they make the financial accounting changes and the merger happens, Blue's percentage, I think, goes up from 25 to, to a little over 3%. So as long as you have 3% ownership, you can apply for a board seat. So we're going to attempt to do that, but we're going to need the co-op support to get that. Um, but I mean, the biggest thing is just, you know, WEC, the new WEC, which is WPS and Winnie Energy, they're going to be driving that ship as far as future investment, where they want the transmission built, where, you know. Uh, I would think they'd fight so, you, you getting a board seat or do what they can to avoid that. I'm sure that they and will. How, yeah. is, how is the relationship with uh, uh, public power and co-ops? It's good. I mean, uh, I mean, the 82 munis, they're always on the same page, and the co-ops are, we get along pretty well with them as well. So we'll see what happens. I mean, I guess worst case scenario, a big outfit from outside the state could come in and, and buy them. Mm -hmm. And then who knows what will happen with stock ownership and everything else. And they would be the key driver in making that decision since they own 64%. <laughs> Any other questions or comments for Jim? Reviewing the accounts payable. Uh, yeah. Well, before we, before we sure. get into that, I'd like to bring something up if I could. Sure. It's not a big expense thing, but this is the second year in a row that no one has taken advantage of the scholarship program. And it's got to be, <laughs> you know, they say that they need money, they have to go to school, they need training. You offer it and they don't take it. What, what, what do we have to do to? I don't know, maybe we, could, we should have an, a commission meeting to address agenda that and, and address it. Um, uh, the, 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 uh, what our counselors say that just nobody's going into math and science anymore and yeah. within, and I find that hard to believe. Now maybe we need to raise the value of them a little bit or we need to somehow do a better job of marketing them or whatever that is. I mean, I guess mailing them the applications and telling them to distribute it hasn't been enough. So maybe a combination of those two things we can try to generate interest. But I find it hard to believe that nobody's going into math and science, but um, I'm sure next year you'll get one application. <laughs> Or, or find a better way to market it to get to get better interest because it's the second year in a row and it's there's been other year I think I've been here almost nine years now and there's only been two or three years where we haven't had any applications sometimes we have more than others but the last two we haven't had any so well some of the excuse I've heard some of the excuses make you want to puke I mean talk about chintzy one was oh I didn't get it in on time if I'm going after a couple hundred bucks for all my tuition, I'll be darn sure I can get it in on time. So apparently they just, like you say, there is no interest or they don't care. Or yeah. It's frustrating. I agree. We'll take a look at it and see thank you. do the short up the program. Okay, thank you. Review of the cons payable. <coughs> It's the AMI radio system repair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had um, the cable that goes from the radio at the um, West Water Tower up to the top of the tower. The underground portion of that failed, and so we needed to have the radio company come in and help us repair that. Okay.
on page four, there was a Intel replacement of phones. How many phones were replaced? That was a replacement of two analog phones and one of the IP phones. Okay. <coughs> Thank you.